The cold weather we've been having lately doesn't have to put a damper on your camping. Just last week we were all out on the Kentucky Adventure Tour and we were waking up to snow in the morning. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take some time to go over my top five items that I take with me when cold weather camping. Like usual, uh, anything that I go over in this list is going to be in the description below. Uh, so if you scroll down and use my links then I get a small amount of commission and that helps me bring more of these videos to you. Sleeping bag. The most important piece of equipment you can take for cold weather camping is a good sleeping bag. Now a lot of these sleeping bags can set you back hundreds of dollars, especially for the backpacking ones. But this one cost me only about $40. Now this is a fantastic sleeping bag. It's uh, one of the Coleman sleeping bags. Uh, and it helps keep you extra warm uh, in several ways. One of them is the thick insulation on it. Uh, but it also helps that it is a mummy sleeping bag so that you can keep your head warm. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of space uh, around the side of your body. Uh, another thing about it is that it has multiple tightening spots. So you can tighten this way up so that you don't let any of the air out while you're sleeping. It keeps you nice and warm. Uh, it also has some down on the inside, so there's another one around uh, my shoulder area, which you can't quite see. And all of those together give this a comfort rating of 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can sleep out in the cold in this comfortably. It also has a survival rating of around zero, so it means uh, you will survive the night, but you won't be pretty comfortable at zero degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna have to take this off. I am ridiculously hot. Now in terms of length, I'm six foot one and I fit in this thing perfectly. Uh, if you were a little wider than me, because it's a mummy sleeping bag, it might be a little bit tight. Uh, another problem with this is the size of it when it's rolled up. So this does not compress down much. As you can see, it has a very large bag. Uh, so this is not a backpacking sleeping bag. If you're camping in your vehicle, it's fine. If you've got a rooftop tent, I mean, you can leave this out. You don't even have to compress it. If you want a little bit of extra warmth, you also have the option of one of these. This is a Coleman sleeping bag liner and it goes on the inside of this uh, and it can provide about 10 degrees extra comfort. Uh, so where this is a 15 degree comfort rating uh, with the sleeping bag liner that goes down to about a 5 degree comfort rating. Uh, so it is very warm. It also has several advantages. One of those is if you do get a little bit too hot in the main sleeping bag, you can unzip the main sleeping bag and you won't have that really cold air hitting you because you'll have this protecting you. Uh, another advantage is that uh, this can be taken out and washed. So if you do end up sweating, uh, you can wash this easily and it saves you having to try and wash the sleeping bag, which is not good for the sleeping bag. This can also be used during the summer, so it can work as a sleeping bag by itself, uh, or it can be unzipped completely and used as a small throw or small blanket. So this is well worth getting. When camping in the cold, you're gonna want something to insulate yourself from the cold underneath. If you're in a ground tent, you're gonna want something that is gonna protect you from the cold ground. And if you're in a rooftop tent, you're gonna want something that's protecting you from the air that is flowing underneath the rooftop tent. Now, rooftop tents often come with a small memory foam mattress, but this thing beats them all. This is the most comfortable camp bed that I have ever slept on. It is also very thick, so it provides great insulation underneath. I've used this thing in my rooftop tent, and I've used this thing just to sleep in my Jeep as well. Uh, now this is a self-inflating mattress, so it inflates and deflates easily. Uh, all you have to do is undo one of the vents on one of the top corners, and then you can either roll it up or just fold it up. When I slept in my Jeep, I just folded this up and left it behind the back seats. Uh, and if it's in a rooftop tent, all you do is undo the vents and you can fold the rooftop tent with it in there. You don't have to do anything else. It'll deflate itself as much as necessary. The only downside I can think of when it comes to this camp bed is just the size uh, of it when it is rolled up. It takes up a lot of space. Now, if you're going overlanding, Space isn't always a huge issue, but it may be something to take into consideration. And you definitely wouldn't want to take this backpacking. If you've ever talked to anyone about cold weather camping, they've probably told you about the Mr. Buddy heater. 
This little heater runs off propane and gives off an incredible amount of heat. You will be plenty hot enough in a tent with this thing on low. And on low it takes about two to three of these little propane tanks a night. One of the biggest concerns that people have with these uh, is that it is obviously an open flame in your tent. Uh, but they do come with a tilt sensor built in, so if you tip them, they turn off. Now I keep mine in a metal baking tray as well, just in case, so that if the front were hot and it tipped over, it wouldn't melt anything. Now these little things run off propane, and by burning propane you are reacting it with oxygen. That produces two things in ideal conditions, carbon dioxide and water. Now, the water it produces comes out in the form of water vapor, but if it's cold outside, that's all going to condense on the outside of your tent. Last year, when I went camping in around zero degree weather, I left this thing running on low all night, and I woke up with sheets of ice down the outside of the tent. Then when I folded the tent up, all that ice ended up in the bedding, and it was pretty unpleasant. So that is something you have to bear in mind, is you are going to have water build up anytime you use one of these. Another issue, and a more dangerous issue, is to do with the oxygen that's burning. So you are competing with this for oxygen, and it's going to be burning the oxygen that's inside the tent all night. And if the oxygen starts to run low, this is going to start producing carbon monoxide instead of carbon dioxide. And carbon monoxide is deadly. Now it does have a, f a safety feature built in where it has an oxygen sensor, so if the oxygen does get low, it is supposed to shut off. That's not something I'm going to rely on though, so I also have a carbon monoxide tester just as backup. Don't tell my wife I put these on the table. These boots are probably my favorite thing to take with me anytime it's cold outside, whether I'm camping or not. Uh, even if I'm just out riding the trails, these things are great because they are waterproof and mudproof. So you can jump out of your vehicle no matter how muddy it is. These things actually survived Expo East, which if you went or you've seen the videos, you know that's a big deal. There was a lot of mud there. These are also heavily insulated, so they are fantastic in the cold. You probably know that if you're camping in the cold, the first thing that gets cold are your toes. Well, this helps keep them warm. Now, they do run a little large, but that's okay because I used the extra space in there to put an extra insole in. Uh, just, you know, an extra little bit of insulation against the cold ground. I really recommend these. The final thing I recommend for cold weather camping is more of a luxury rather than a necessity, and that's a decent awning and even an awning room to go with it. Now the awning can be set up to keep the rain off you and keep you dry, but if you use the awning room, that's going to seal you off from all the rain and the wind, and it'll let you set up the Mr. Buddy heater inside and actually warm it. You can use that area just to hang out, uh, or you can actually set it up for cooking. Now that awning and awning room can be used throughout the rest of the year too. Uh, any season, it's raining, you can set up that awning, you can chill out underneath, you can cook underneath, it's going to keep you dry. But in the summer, if you're going up, especially like the northeast, you can set up the awning room uh, and have just the mesh outside. And that's going to keep all of those mosquitoes away from you while you're hanging out or when you're cooking. Actually, I do have one more thing I want to mention, uh, and that's for if you do photography or if you video like I do, and that is this little Pelican case here. This little Pelican case is great for storing batteries overnight. If you've taken batteries with you, you know that the cold weather drains them. This case is sealed and insulated, so what I do is I just put my batteries in here and I'll throw in a hand warmer with them, and it keeps them warm enough overnight that you don't lose the whole charge. I want to know what your must-have cold weather camping gear is too. So scroll down in the comments, leave me a comment, tell me what you take with you. If you've got any really good ideas, I'll pin them to the top so other people can see them. If you're interested in buying anything I've mentioned, scroll down to the description and use my links.
All right, so if you didn't know, YouTube monetization works best when a video is over 10 minutes long. That's why you see a bunch of people add on some stuff to the end, and I'm doing exactly the same. So I'm gonna give you a bonus, bonus tip for staying warm in the winter. Let's make yourself some nice English breakfast tea. Get yourself some tea bags, some boiling water, a couple of sugars, if you like it sweet, do two. If you don't want it as sweet, just do one. And then pour on a splash of milk and make it a nice golden brown color. That'll keep you warm. Yeah, that's good.